I remember it was <clears throat> it was at Berkeley um, when I was there. I think in '89, and um, I had done all these. I was working on all these like big Sean Lane, you know. I can't, oh yeah. Can't do them anymore. Killers. But the string skipping, you know, uh, you know, like three octaves between each hand or whatever. My hands are pretty small, so that's probably another reason. But um, I got up one morning and I started, you know, doing it, and I was like, like my finger wasn't coming down. You know, right. I was like that's yeah, weird. It's not coming down in the right place. You know, right. it's the pinky and the third finger. There's something in between them. Oh, the okay. third finger doesn't really want to lift. Right. Um, but I don't know that it's the third finger as much as it is a weakness in the pinky because mm -hmm. I feel like I don't have control of getting the pinky down. Right. Um, but the dystonia, there wasn't a pain element to it. Mm -mm. It was a, like a, a, a short circuit of sorts. Yeah, no pain. I mean, it gradually, it gradually became a problem where I, I started, to, I was like, you know, I can't, I mean, these three upper string scales, like my little fingers started to not really be able to place down at the right place. Okay. Um, was this, uh, did this affect things you did other than guitar? Not so much. Like, um, would you even have noticed if you weren't playing the guitar? I don't think so. It's a, like they say, it's a very task uh, specific kind okay. of thing. Um, so did you think that perhaps by navigating around the problem that there, it might make it worse or were you concerned about that? Um, you know, I didn't know. I guess, like I said, I, I really tried, tried not to think so much about the bigger picture, you know, of losing the ability or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. I thought I'm just going to do. Like, it was the same uh, force of will, I think, that has kept me going this long, you know, with, through na navigating the original, like, how do I play the Yngwie stuff, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know, it was 2005, I did um, a CD, and I remember doing all the solos. It was kind of a transition point in the dystonia because I still could kind of get my little finger down okay. like if I did a one, two, four combination. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do one, three, four, but if I did like the one, two, four, I could kind of do it. Right. But it was starting to lose a little bit of the, the okay. pressure to be able to do that. So I recorded like half the solos on the album, like literally like holding this finger and like, oh wow, doing this kind of stuff and then like going into something and then coming so back and grabbing the finger. Legato and, you know, passages where you didn't need a right hand. Yeah, it was like, okay. you know, literally like just holding my finger mm -hmm. and like do the legato stuff. And in your case, um, it, it, that the excessive practice was a trigger, perhaps, mm -hmm. for, for this. And we think that dystonia is, is it more of something that someone has a predisposition for. That's what I they guess, say, yeah. Right? Yep. But, so it's not the practice that's going to, it's not going to happen to you unless you have that predisposition. Right. But the practice will trigger it. Yep. This Pretty was intense. at Berkeley? This is Berkeley, okay. yeah. So you, you went to Berkeley for your, your four-year undergrad mm -hmm. experience? Yep. Got it. You get a uh, BM when you get out That's of Berkeley. What, <laughs> Just what is that? Title. Is it a competitive place in the sense that everybody is going to outpractice the other, everybody else, or what, um, what's going on there? Yeah, it, I mean, you, you know, you have literally nine hundred to thousand guitar players uh -huh. in the same place, and so, um, you know, it, I mean, definitely. Yes, and, and certainly, kids are kind of wired for this because we're, no so, one can tell us not to eat that much right. sugar cereal or practice the Paul Gilbert lick that many times. Yeah. We're just going to do that. For sure. You know, a million times. For sure. Especially yeah. if you have that disposition where you're like, you know, I mean, whatever. Some kids probably get into it and they, they love the Ramones and that's great. <laughs> um, but no one gets power chord dystonia. But I don't know that anybody that, that <laughs> has really gone that path is like, you know, got a dystonia. It's usually the guys that, you know, do the million miles an hour that's practicing right. all the time. Yeah, I, I think it's fascinating that you're, you're coming out the other end of this and you can still do this. Uh, and I'm grateful for you sitting down and talking about it. Well, I, I appreciate you coming and asking me questions about it. I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's cool. Like I said, I, I try to focus on the positive aspect of it. I mean, it's definitely a drag, and you know, certainly the more that um, you can't do things, you know, but uh, that's, you know, it's been my biggest mission, I guess, to be able to try to keep working through, you know, when something happens and I can't use this thing anymore, or you know, a pattern or whatever. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, what can yeah. I do now? Yeah. As 
something like that. I don't know. That's good to me. <clears throat> Thanks so much. Thank you, sir.